Good afternoon. I'm Pete Lewis, the mayor of Auburn, and I wanted to welcome you to a long-awaited project. I was talking to Bill Gates over here of Mohawk Plastics, and I was reminded that this there was originally a roadway dedicated in the mid-70s. Talk about advanced planning on the part of the citizens in the city of Auburn. This project will connect a major north-south corridor in our city. This gives us another major freight corridor in our city. It will co uh, connect 3rd Street on the south end with 277th on the north. It also gives our truck traffic, our freight corridor, the ability to connect up with 15th and 167. This is a long-awaited project that's been going on actively for more than 20 years we started seeking funding more than 10 years ago. And to give you an idea of how long it was, some of the participants in this funding package was uh, uh, Congresswoman Jennifer Dunn. So the Dunn family is still involved, but I wanted you to know who all has been inv involved over the year. Now we do have some folks here present from our city council and from beyond. First of all, our deputy mayor, Sue Singer and council members Rich Wagner and Bill Peloza. We also have State Senator Pam Roach here, State Representative Mark Hargrove. We do have our Chamber Executive here, Nancy Wyatt, as well as the director of TADA, which is the Auburn Downtown Association, Kathleen Keeter. I'm also going to introduce my wife, Kathy Lewis, for fear of forgetting. And Ingrid Gnob will be talking to you a little bit later on about some of the folks who've really made this project possible because we talk a lot, but they have to get out in the dirt and do the work. Now, as we talk about this, this was a long-term project, but it was a public-private partnership. It was led by the private sector. It's one of those projects where the private sector, as in the helicopters going by, because we have the third busiest commuter airport in the state of Washington, the private sector actually went ahead of the, of the public sector. Mohawk Plastic and their folks all got together and they built this section of the roadway. It was our road to nowhere for a period of years in anticipation and in partnership with the city of Auburn, knowing that we could then use that as reason to seek out funding on a state and federal level. And we did just that. Some of the partners in this were the Puget Sound Regional Council, as I said, the Federal Discretionary Fund, it was the original Dunn and Cantwell request, which was in 2005. Also, another Puget Sound uh, Regional Council reallocation of funds that was done in 2005. Another federal request that was done through Senator Patty Murray's office in 2006, 2008, and 2009, which completed our funding package for this desperately needed corridor. Now, we're going to talk a bit more about this, but I want some of the leaders of this effort to come forward first. Now, there's always been a driving force behind this particular road, even as I was still on the council, and one of the, one of the council members was just adamant that this was going to move forward. And with that, I'd like to introduce our Deputy Mayor, Sue Singer. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to offer a regional perspective on this project. In the Puget Sound region, our council, our governments, counties, ports, all work together by consensus to decide on our future. And Council Member Norman and I both worked on these projects called Vision 2020 and then Vision 2040 that was uh, just passed a couple years ago. One of those policies states that we will prioritize transportation projects that better connect our regional growth centers. 
And since Auburn is one of those centers, we were able to get some funding through the PSRC. And this project is recognized as a regionally significant project by Puget Sound Regional Council, and we did get significant funding from them. So it isn't just, uh, just Auburn's project. It's a project for the region and is connected to our future Oh, at least through 2040 and beyond. So I'm really pleased that, that this day is finally here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sue. Let's take that a step further. Years ago, as this was going through, the deputy mayor was also the president of the Puget Sound Regional Council. Now, that's not the reason we got the funding. That came through a different package whatsoever. And I, I wouldn't make, <laughs> although it didn't hurt. And I do appreciate it. And while the deputy mayor was sitting as the president of the Puget Sound Regional Council, Council Member Norman was on the Transportation Committee, on the Growth Management, Growth Management Committee, and I sat on Puget Sound Regional Council's Economic Development Board. As our council is fond of saying, and as, as is our chamber where we originally got it, you're either at the table or you're on somebody else's menu. City of Auburn has chosen to be at every table possible and it's because of the efforts of the Deputy Mayor, Council Member Norman, and others who have made this possible. Now as we started this journey it had to go through the Public Works Committee because we talked about it would be nice to have a road. Make the road go from here to there. And we knew that our partners Mohawk Plastic had done a marvelous job of building a road in the middle. But quite frankly, I don't know anything at all about how a road is supposed to look and how a cross section of a road is done or how wide the sidewalk is supposed to be or the bike path or anything else. So for that, we had to turn it over to our public works department. But at our public works department, they have an oversight committee as well, public works committee, and they know everything there is to know about engineering and public works. Or at least you would all think so, and so would I, because it's chaired by our senior council member, Rich Wagner. Council member Wagner, would you please come and talk about a little bit about the process that I've never completely understood? <laughs> Well, I'm pleased to be here today. I've been the chairman of the Public Works Committee for, I think, 18 years. And this project has been one that we've been dealing with for 18 years. Uh, I wanted to introduce the, one of the other members of our committee, uh, the Public Works Committee, and that's Council Member Bill Peloza. And he and I and uh, Council Member Haugen are the current members of that committee. And that's where all the nuts and bolts get decided. It gets the widths of roads, the environmental mitigations, the kinds of pavement, all those nuts and bolts come through the Public Works Committee for oversight. And I want to thank the staff of our city for the way that they brought forward things in a way that we could understand them and make decisions about the nuts and bolts of a project like this. And also the private uh, sector that helped with this and the funding that came from our partners on the federal and state level. All of those people brought the Public Works Committee understandable, concise information. So thank you to all of you for that. Thank you very much. And, and speaking of staff, there's been an incredible staff effort that's gone into this for many of our departments. Our public works department has been lead. And, uh, but we also had our planning department that had to work on this project as well in many different forms, including the environmental impacts. Now, the finance department, I seem to have talked to on a regular basis about the funding for this uh, moment to moment and to make sure that we did have a financial plan in effect. But we also had other things that we had to look at. The police department had to talk to us about what the impacts would be when we open up a new road. Risk management was always there in my ear to tell me what I needed to do as we opened up a road and to make it safe for everyone. All of our departments really have had a part in this, including our parks department, because as you see here, in our wonderful little setup here where we're going to break ground, that was already done by our parks department a short time ago. But the project lead 
for this, our project manager for this is Ingr Ingrid Gobb, and she's got some folks that I know that she needs to introduce. Ingrid? Thank you, Mayor. So as the mayor um, talked about earlier, this project has been going on for a really long time. We actually started working on this final design effort in about 2002. And in 2006, we brought on a design team to accomplish that work. And that team uh, consisted of Tetratech Inca and their project manager, Sandy Glover, who's here today. Um, also, in getting the work done, we also had several other consultants that had to help do that work. And those included ESA Adelson for the environmental permitting, which was a significant effort. Uh, Jacobson Associates uh, for the geotechnical work, Karen Keist for landscaping, NTEC for environmental studies, and Abeda and Associates for the property acquisition. Uh, as we move into the construction for this project and, and get to complete this great project, uh, we're looking forward to working with our contractor, Miles Resources, and their project manager, Joss Helm, uh, so that we can see this project finally become a reality after so many years. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can see the progression of events here. This, this land was dedicated for right of way in the 70s. When I was on the council, and even before the time I was on the council, they were starting to talk about this road, and Deputy Mayor Singer led the way on that. 2002, when this was really started to be dedicated, as we had put it forward as a project, was my first year in office as mayor. 2011, we finally have all the funds together to break ground and begin to build another north-south corridor in a city. Having the ability to put together a, quarter, a corridor like this in a hundred-year-old community does not happen often. For the most part, most roads have been fully dedicated long before that. There's little opportunity to do something that it really will change how our community sets up. Not only will we have C Street in Auburn Way, but we'll also have the AB corridor for all of our freight movements. And that is a regional gain. Not only is it a regional gain, but it's also a gain for our business community specifically. And that's why the partnership with the business community was so very important. And here to talk a little bit about that is our chamber exec, Nancy Wyatt. Thank you, Mayor. And it is critical to have that partnership between business and your city government. And I remember when I came onto the chamber over five years ago now, they were talking about this street and how critical it was to get that connection from our downtown area to the north end. And again, when we've met with, uh, in partnership with the city to talk about our streets task force and everything that we can do to get our freight moving throughout our city, this has been a key component and we're finally seeing that come together. Finally, we have the money and we're ready to go. And yes, railway is a part of that connection. <laughs> but it has been an absolute pleasure working with the city and with the city staff who are so dedicated to getting something like this accomplished. And just knowing from the chamber side and our tourism side even, knowing that we're gonna be able to bring businesses down from the north end to our critical downtown core and vice versa, getting our core up to the north end. Just having that connectivity, and that's what we've been talking about for so long with our streets task force, is getting that connectivity in our area. And this is an exciting day to be able to break ground for this and get this city moving. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, it would seem like it would disturb us here that we've had, we've had helicopters fly by. We've had airplanes fly by. The railroad is right next door and one of our trains has been going through our town. This is the life in our city. This is the heartblood of our city. We have a community that's very rich in manufacturing and transportation as well as entertainment. And the opening of this corridor will make a difference to all these business sectors. Now I believe that we have an opportunity here to do a little groundbreaking to start up a new corridor. It's gonna be a few months as we build. At that time we're gonna have another ceremony where we cut a ribbon. And we'll be opening a brand new corridor in our city. 
Now, on the other side of our city, we're going to be closing a road for a period of time here pretty soon as we start on the M Street underpass. During this summer, we're going to be working on numerous projects throughout the city because you know there's two seasons in the state of Washington. There's the rainy season and the construction season. If it's not doing one, we're doing the other. At the same time as I was just reminded, we've got a massive project going on on West Valley Highway. And we will be starting that one as well. It will be a busy year here in your city. Projects that have been worked on for decades are now starting to come to fruition. Sometimes they take five, 10 years or more to put the funding together. But once the funding comes together, we start to move forward quickly. And with that, we're going to move to a groundbreaking ceremony for this project. And if I could have everybody join me with a shovel, please.